Well, good evening. God bless you. Happy New Year. It's good to be back in the house of prayer as we begin another year. I thank God, don't you, for blessing us Amen. to um, begin another year. 2020 was challenging to say the least, but we serve a God who is able. And thank God he has brought us over into a new year. And I'm excited about it. I'm excited about what God is going to do in this upcoming year. We'd like to welcome all of you in to our Wednesday evening Bible study and prayer. We thank God for yet another opportunity to come into your homes or your automobiles or wherever you may be and share with you uh, what God has laid on our heart. We usually, at the end of the previous year, take some time off, and we do that uh, in an effort to hear from the Lord. We want to be led by the Spirit as we uh, launch a new series of teachings. Uh, we ended last year on miracles from the New Testament, and uh, I did not know when the year ended uh, where I would go from that point. And so we, like I said, we take time off and we, we seek the Lord because only he knows what his people need. And so I, in my time of silence and solitude, in my time of meditation and seeking the Lord, I began to reflect. And I guess all of us did that, a little bit of that. We thought about all of the things that we had gone through in 2020. And hopefully we were reflecting on the things that we were praying for and believing God for in the upcoming year. And in my reflection, I began to praise God for the things that I learned. Because make no mistake about it, when God takes you through something, it's for a purpose. He, he, he intends for you to come out of that thing stronger and better, yeah. Ebony says, and wiser. Yeah. And so my prayer was, well, what were you trying to teach us in 2020. And of course, I heard the Lord say a number of things that I won't go into. Uh, but, but my praise erupted because I realized that it had not been all for naught. In other words, all of the heartbreak and heartache and whatever we went through, it was for, it was for a reason. It was for a purpose. And so I began to thank God for what I had learned from going through 2020. And I began to praise him for what I already knew. You see, because it was the things that I knew that, that, that had come up in me spiritually from uh, the beginning of my uh, time in the Lord that helped me to get through 2020. Now, you see what I'm saying? It, it was the things that I, I understood, the things that I knew about the Lord that helped me to go through the times of sorrow with joy, with, to go through the times of not feeling well or, or sickness or illness, knowing that I was healed. It, it was because... Through the years, I had learned some things. And what you know is what causes you to grow. And so our series for probably the next, this quarter, I don't know how much beyond that, uh, I'm entitling it the lessons, lessons that all Christians should learn. What, what I want you to understand is when you get saved, when God brings you into the family, 
uh, he has a developmental process set up for you. And it involves learning and growing. It involves teaching and listening. That's how you learn and that's how you grow. And so for the next few weeks, I'm going to be teaching you some things uh, that all Christians should know. And my emphasis is going to be on uh, the grace. The grace that, in other words, it's because of God's graciousness. It's because he cares so much for us that he equips us to go through. He, he has a plan. He has a well thought out plan to equip us so that we can be victorious on every hand. The scripture says we are more than conquerors through him. It's only through him. Uh, Paul said, now thanks be unto God who always causes us to triumph. So we always triumph, but it's because of a, the grace that he gives us to do it. Remember when Paul prayed and asked him to remove the thorn through his, he said, but my grace, my grace, my grace is sufficient. In other words, God graces us with the ability to hear and learn the word. God graces us with the the, the understanding that prayer is necessary. Everybody don't, everybody don't, the grace is free, okay? God, grace, free, when we, when, we, when we define grace, what do we say? Unmerited favor. In other words, it's something that we don't deserve. We, we, we really have no real right to, but God, because he loves us so much, is gracious. And so he imparts, he imparts in us the ability. Think about your, your, some of your neighbors or your, your coworkers or even family members that sometimes you try to explain to them spiritual things and it, they don't get it. It, it, doesn't, it doesn't register with them. Why? Because they have not received him and because they have not received him, they don't have the grace to receive the word of God. And so I said all that to say that that's where my inspiration came from for this series. I, be, I, 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 I became inspired when I began to reflect on what I had learned through the years and how what I learned helped me to make it through trying times. And I thought about how important the teaching is because Remember the Great Commission? That was what Jesus told his disciples when he left them. He said, do what? First he said, go, didn't he? He said, go ye. And then he said, do what? Teach. So that, that lets us know how important it is that someone is teaching. And good sound teaching results in strong spiritual growth. If you have grown in the Lord, if you are better than you used to be, if you know things now that you used to did not know, it's because you have heard the word of God. And not only have you heard it, but what? You received it as truth. You know, because a lot of times we hear stuff and we, okay, yeah. We may mentally assent to it, but it does not reside in our spirit. We don't hold on to it. And so the learning process begins with someone going, thank God he sent me, and someone teaching, thank God he sent you to receive the teaching because it's transmission, it's transmission. It's going out and you want to know that somebody is hearing what you say. When you, when you are teaching the word of God. So teaching becomes very important. Um, and, and, and what's the evidence? What's the evidence that we receive the teaching? If you are flowing in, and, and, and growing in the things that he has taught you, then you will attract others. 
you would track them. Somebody will want, there's somebody who won't, will just want, some people, have you ever had people to call you and say, I just wanted to hear your voice. I just, I just wanted, because I knew you had a word of encouragement for me. I knew you were going to tell me something that uplift my spirit. I knew you, were gonna, you had a, a word from the Lord. I knew you could help me. So if you are attracting others, if other people are reaching out to you for what God has imparted in you, then you know that you are growing. Uh, so the salvation experience is not just about you getting saved from your sins and getting fit for heaven. The salvation experience means that as you grow, you bring somebody along with you. Uh-huh. This, thing, this thing is designed uh, to attract others. When, when Jesus went out, excuse me, please, and, and began his public ministry, he taught. And as he taught, people gathered. They congregated. They walked with him. They stayed with him. Because why? They wanted to hear what he had to say. Because from that, they were getting insight. They were getting encouragement. They were being inspired. And so the salvation experience is all about bringing somebody along with you, touching other lives, uh, giving other people uh, hope. And Lord knows right now, people need hope. They need hope. People, some people are calling you because they need a little hope. They need to hear you say something uh, that will encourage them. But if you don't learn anything, let me go back to my premise. If you don't learn anything, you don't have anything to tell anybody. Listen, you don't have anything to tell yourself. Because you, right? You got to, sometimes we have to talk to ourselves. Sometimes I have, there were so many times. And I'll tell you one thing that did help me doing this, uh, this, 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 uh, public health crisis, and I would, I would look at the TV, which was probably to my detriment. I shouldn't have been watching as much TV as I was watching, and most of us probably can say that. But it's like you want to hear. You want to know what's going on. And I would listen, and I would get criticized. We get in the car because we got, the, you know, the satellite radio, so I can pick up MSNBC in the car. And somebody would say, we got to hear this in the car. We heard, we, it's on every TV in the house. He be wanting to turn on the gospel music, you know, and, and hear the gospel music. I said, well, I want to know what my brother's doing. I want to hear what my brother's doing. But this is one thing that helped me so, because I can't lie. There were so many nights when the day ended that I went to bed and I had to fight depression. Anybody else? I had to fight depression. The, the death totals, the death totals were so enormous that you think, my God, 3,000 people died in one day. In California, they were saying people were dying every 10 minutes. It, it, how many? Okay, but, but it, it was depressing, and I had to, you know, you had to try to fight it, but you got to have something to fight it with. And this is a scripture that came up in my spirit from over in Jeremiah, I believe. It says, it is of the Lord's mercies that we are not consumed. In other words, it's because God is so merciful that it's not someone in my family. I, I hated it, and my, I sympathized and empathized with the people who were going through, but it, it, right then, it wasn't happening to me. Why wasn't it happening to me? Because God is merciful. And then I thought about the scripture that says, his mercy endureth forever. So we are never without God's mercy. He said, look behind you, goodness and mercy 
is following you every day of your life. And so I began to, let me tell you what I did. And I'm going to go on. How many of you, and I know you've heard this because you probably watch as much TV as I watch. They said, oh, he creates his own reality. It's called, it's not a lie. It's not a lie. It's called alternative reality. In other words, you look out and you see a crowd over here on a picture and a crowd over here on a picture. The crowd over here is humongous. And the crowd over here is just average. But they say to you, this crowd is larger than this crowd. And they keep saying it. And they keep saying it. And they keep saying it until all of a sudden you say, oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah you know what I'm saying? So I thought about it. And I said to a friend of mine, we were talking, I said, wouldn't it be wonderful if we created that same reality as it relates to the word of God? Because listen, the Bible says that the kingdom of God does not come with observation. In other words, you can't see it with the natural eye. But there are certain things that go on in the kingdom that are contrary to what goes on in the world. There's sickness in the world, but there's no sickness in the kingdom. There's want and lack in the world, but there's no want and lack in the kingdom. There's chaos and confusion in the world, but there's no... So I decided in my mind that I step over into the kingdom. Yeah. Yeah. Now, somebody said, well, it, everything going crazy in the United States. I said, oh, really? Because I've mean, I, I created my own reality. You see where I'm going with this? I've created, I've decided I'm not going to get caught up in this because that's the world system. But that's not, he said we're in the world, but what? We're not of it. So I decided, thank God I know this. I learned this, that there is, there is now Jesus said, don't look here and low here and low there. He said, the kingdom of God is already here. Where is it, Lord? It's within you. So that was one of the things that I learned that, that, that helped me uh, to make it through 2020 and not get depressed and not get downtrodden. And, and uh, what's, what's that script you use uh, Sunday? Um, why are thou cast down, David said, oh, my soul. I didn't want my soul to get cast down. So I decided I'm going to live in, in this reality, spiritual reality. If it works for them, why do you think all those thousands of people are in Washington today? Why do you think they're there over there protesting? Because they've created their own reality. And their reality is that their candidate won, even though there's no evidence. They created their own reality. And it, it, it's causing them to do what they do and go where they go and be what they are. Well, if they can do, if the world can do that and it works for the world, yeah. understand that you need to create your own spiritual reality. You need to create your own reality. That, no, 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 I understand that people are sick, people are dying, and, 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 and you know, pretty soon it comes close. And I mentioned this uh, Sunday, uh, Wilbur had two cousins, two cousins, to pass away in just about a week's time. And one of them uh, had the virus, and just three weeks prior, her husband had passed of the virus. So, I mean, it starts, it starts, you know, and one of my closest friends, one of my dearest friends, and her husband had it, you know? So it's getting close to me now. And I, I understand that 
God is merciful. If he had not been merciful, I would be one of those. I said to him uh, when they were given the, the number of people, I said, we know somebody that's in that part of that statistic. You know, for so long you didn't know anybody. It was like it was happening way off somewhere else. But all of a sudden, it started happening closer to home. And it makes you realize how blessed you are and how merciful God is. And so, again, these are the things that inspired me uh, to teach lessons. I'm going I, from for the next four weeks, five, ten. I don't know how many, as long as the Lord Lord leads. Every week we'll be doing a lesson that you should know that will help you to make it through your Christian walk. I thought about this scripture, uh, and this is where most of us are, even though we're saved. Because I've been saved, I've been saved over 40 years now, saved a long time. But that doesn't mean that when tragedy strikes or disaster set in, that it doesn't affect us. Uh -huh. Just because we're saved don't mean we're made out of iron now. <laughs> we, still, we still feel it. You know, we still feel these things, and we get downtrodden and, and downcast and depressed. And I thought about what Jesus said, and this is how I'm going to end today and how I'm going to bring this thing right down here. I'm going to put a fine point on it for you, and I'm going to let you go. Jesus said in Matthew 11, and this is a a familiar scripture to you. you. Some of you may look it up, but Matthew 11, and it's 28 through 30. And so as he prepares us, listen, listen, as he prepares us to go through the things that we have to deal with, he first does it by invitation. Okay, Matthew 11, 28. Come unto me, all ye that do what? Labor. You know the scripture. And are heavy laden. And what will I do? I'll give you rest. He says, take my yoke upon you and do what? And stop. Stop. And do what? Learn. Learn. That's what we're talking about. It's what, we, what we're going to learn and what we have learned that's going to help us to make it through. He says, take my yoke upon you and learn of me, for I am meek. Didn't you say that? And lowly in heart. He says, and you shall find rest unto your soul. For my yoke is easy, and my burden is light. Now, I'm not a great fan of the Message Bible. I understand, when I first got saved, we could hardly use anything other than King James. You know, they the only you come up with another trend. I don't read that. Read King James, and then a little bit later they start letting us. They start accepting the NIV, and then a little bit later we could go to the Amplified. But there are so many translations, and I heard Pastor take a scripture from one Sunday, and I said I don't know the passion. I don't, I don't think I know every translation, but I didn't know the Passion translation. And so I said, I need to read my scripture and then see if it, if it works. But this is, this is where it works in the message. Uh, and I should have put it on your sheet because you need to see this, so you should pull it up. It's Matthew 11, 28, 29, and 30 from the Message Bible. So this is what it says. It says, it, he starts out by asking a question. He says, are you tired? He says, are you worn out, burned out on religion? He says, come to me, get away with me, and I will, uh, and you will recover your life. He says, I'll show you how to, to take a real rest. He says, walk with me, work with me, watch how I do it. 
This is where I took my thought for today's lesson. He says, learn the unforced rhythms of grace. Again, he says, learn the unforced rhythms of grace. He said, I won't lay anything on you that's heavy or ill-fitting. He says, keep company with me, and you will learn to live freely and lightly. And so he says that what you are going to learn as you learn to rest is that you are going to learn the unforced. When you think about something that's unforced, it's just, it, what, it flows freely. It's nothing obstructing it. It's nothing limiting it. It's nothing restricting it. It just flows. He says, learn the unforced rhythms of grace. Grace. Well, where does grace come from? The origin of grace you'll find in John 1 and 14. You know that scripture. He said, and the word was made flesh, and what did it do? It dwelled among us, talking about Jesus. He said, we beheld the only begotten of the Father. Uh, full of, we beheld his glory. The glory of the only begotten of the Father. Full of grace, and what else? And truth. So the, you don't hear a lot about grace in the Old Testament, but it says grace came, the law came by Moses, but grace came through Christ Jesus. And then in 16, he says, the same chapter, John 1, 16, and of his fullness have all we received and grace for grace. So in other words, here's, here's, here's the picture that I want you to see. Everything that you have acquired knowledge-wise, wisdom-wise, everything that you have learned that helps you to get from point A to point B, to help you get through the day, it is freely, graciously, graciously. He said grace for grace. It is given to you freely. As graciously as he gives it to us, we must graciously receive it. It doesn't work. He said, I'm going to show you how to take a real rest. I'm going to show you how to learn the unforced rhythms of grace. But we have a part to play. And what has happened in the church is that people come, they come on Sundays, they hear word. Oh, then the pastor preached a good sermon today. Yeah, what did he preach? I don't know, child, I forgot. But, but it sure was good. <laughs> you know. Uh, he, oh, he was, on, he was on the wall, and he kicked his leg, and, 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 and he had his towel going, and, you know, he preached. Child, he preached. The whole church was up. Folks was running. You know, we had a time. They said, yeah, what was the message? I don't know. I know, but I didn't know it was good. I, I mean, nobody enjoys church more than me. I love a good time in church. Don't you? I love a good time in church. I love it when Pastor Will, the anointing is all over him, and he's preaching his heart out. I love it when Nene and the, and the praise team get up and sing out of their heart. I love it. But when I leave here, I got to have something that will help me to make it. And the jumping up and down and shouting hallelujah and running around the church, that's good in this place. But when sickness, help, when sickness hits, I need some help. And the help is in what I've learned. The help is in what I've acquired. So there, not only is there uh, the Jesus, Jesus came full of grace and truth, but there's an impartation of that grace. He graces you. If you're able to pray a prayer, if you're able to pray an earnest and effective prayer, it's because of a grace. It's the grace of God that allows you to utter the words that touch heaven. If you're able to read the Bible with clarity and with understanding, it's because God has graced you. He graced me. He has graced me to communicate 
the word to other people. It's a grace. It's, that, it, it's nothing I can be proud of because he didn't give it to me to puff me up. He gave it to me so that I could be a blessing to his people. It's a grace. It's a gift. And so everything we learn, grace for grace, he freely gives it. We freely receive it. It's a grace for grace. And so in the next few weeks, we're going to learn uh, how God has graced us to be able to pray, to be able to uh, uh, walk in faith, to be able to acquire wisdom and apply that wisdom. The things that help us from day to day, it's a grace. That's all I know today. That's it. That's, 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 it. that's just my little introduction. And so next week we'll have our first, and I believe our first uh, lesson will be on um, the necessity of the word and, and obedience to the word uh, be our next lesson uh, on next week. So at this time, we want to take a moment and remember those of you who are tuning in and especially those of you who are struggling. I had an opportunity to hear from Sister Alfreda King on um, this past week, and she, is, she said that she is improving. And we certainly thank God for that, for, for touching her. And uh, we, we heard uh, that, uh, <clears throat> We heard that brother uh, Suggs is out of the hospital and, and he is uh, still weak, but he's improving. And we are, we are continuing to, we are continuously praying for brother uh, Deacon Will Jones that God will continue to touch him and strengthen him and to Rosario, Rosario Stoggle, who has had somewhat of a battle. We want to remember her as well. And, you know, we don't know all, but let me just say this as we get ready to close. We are in the process of setting up a prayer line or a, a prayer circle or an opportunity for those of you who need to to call in. You'll hear more about it. We're in the process of putting it together now. And you'll be able to call us and uh, have somebody to pray with you. And of course, as we learn of your situations, we'll be careful to mention those things so that all of our listeners and our members and our people who are praying can add you to their prayer list because the Bible does tell us to pray for one another, that we are helpers one to another, and we want to do that. We can't get to you physically, but we can certainly pr pray for you in prayer, uh, you know, reaches around the globe. It may be some of your family members in another state or something, but we can pray for them because prayer has no limits. Now, God, we thank you again because you've been so kind and you've been so good. You blessed us, oh God, to come into another year. We thank you for the things that you've imparted in our spirits today, the things that you've given us to hear and to understand. Lord, we pray for those our members who are struggling today, whether it be a health issue or a financial issue or employment or whatever the need may be. We know that you are an able God, and we thank you now that even as we pray, you are meeting every need one by one and name by name. We thank you for everything you've done for us. You brought us out. You brought us through. You brought us to this place. And we are grateful today. We pray for our nation again. We pray that you continue to bless. We thank you for what you did in the election on last evening. Yes. We know it's your mercy, God. Yes. We know it's because you're a merciful God and you didn't want us to suffer any longer. Yes. And we thank you for what you're doing even now. We thank you for all of your many, many blessings. We pray that you will continue to keep us together, keep this 
this segment of the body, men of a missionary Baptist church. Keep us together, God. Keep us as one. We pray for our pastor that you will continue to strengthen him and, 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 and give him the wisdom that he needs to uh, lead this congregation. And we just give you all the praise and all the glory for everything that you do. Touch Alfreda again, God. Touch uh, Brother Suggs. Touch Deacon Jones. Touch Rose Earl. Those that have special needs today, touch all of them as only you can. And God, we'll be careful to give you the glory, the honor, and the praise in Jesus' name. Now we thank God for you. We want to remind you that our Bible study is up and running again after the holidays. Some of you didn't get the word, but we'll be here every day, the Lord's will. We'll be here every Wednesday. Uh, at 12 noon to share the word of God with you. And we are still having our in-person services every first Sunday and every third Sunday. And those of you who can and will, we look to see you there. Thank God for you, and we look forward to seeing you again on next Wednesday evening.